welcome back. In this video, we look at memory systems. Up to this point in our diagrams of the CPU, we have assumed that this small instruction memory holds all of our code, and this small data memory holds all of our data. In other words, that we have all the memory we need and that it's all very fast. How is this illusion of unlimited fast memory supported? Computer systems have many layers of memory with different access speeds and different costs. There's an inverse relationship between speed and costs. This means we have more memory from the cheaper but slower memories and less memory from the faster expensive types of memory. At the bottom of the hierarchy is non-volatile memory, like a hard disk, either SSD or magnetic disk. Higher levels are all volatile memory. Contents are present as long as power is on. As a program is loaded, all or part of it is copied from disk into main memory RAM, the working memory of the computer. As a CPU needs items, they are copied from RAM to cache memory inside the CPU, which is made of very fast SRAM memory. Data is loaded into registers as needed for CPU access. Let's assume three levels of memory. A given system will have a predefined block size, which is the number of words copied at a time between levels of the memory hierarchy. Data is only copied one level at a time. It doesn't skip levels. If the CPU looks for data and finds it, this is called a hit. If it doesn't find it, it's a miss. Upon a miss, the system will have to look for it in lower levels of the hierarchy and copy it. The hit rate is the percentage of time that the CPU looked for something and found it. The hit time is not zero. It takes time to access the memory, including time to determine if it's a hit or miss. The miss rate is the percentage of time that the CPU looked for something and didn't find it. The miss penalty is the time required to replace a block in the upper level with a block from the lower level. The illusion of unlimited fast memory is supported by the memory hierarchy and the principle of locality which is simply an observation that programs access a small portion of their address space at any time. There are two aspects to the principle of locality, temporal and spatial. Temporal locality is the observation that items that were accessed recently are likely to be accessed again soon. An example are instructions within a loop or induction variables. An induction variable is a variable that gets increased or decreased by a fixed amount on every iteration. Spatial locality is the observation that items near those recently accessed are likely to be accessed. For example, instructions in sequence or array data. There are four major types of memory used today. The first is DRAM for main memory RAM, SRAM is used for cache. Cache memory is inside the CPU. Flash memory is used for solid state drives and magnetic disk for large storage drives. This table shows the difference in access time and cost for the four different main types of memory storage. Magnetic disk is the slowest with access times 5 to 20 million nanoseconds but it's also the cheapest, as low as 5 cents per gigabit. Next is flash memory in the range of 5 to 50,000 nanoseconds at up to 10 times the cost. Then DRAM down to 50 to 70 nanoseconds, 10 to 20 dollars per gigabit. The fastest and most expensive memory is SRAM as low as 0.5 nanosecond access time but five to a thousand dollars per gigabit. The good news about all memory technologies is that over the years they are getting faster and less expensive. SRAM, static random access memory, is used for cache. It's called static because it keeps its contents as long as it has power. 
SRAM requires about six to eight transistors to store a single bit, which is one reason why it's more expensive. Here we see a diagram to store one bit. Each bit is at an intersection of a word line and a bit line. Let's say a one comes in the bit line. When writing to the bit, the transistor will be open to allow the one to come in, and the one will be stored in these inverter gates in this loop, inverting to zero and then back to one over and over. Each inverter is constructed from two transistors. Having an extra transistor and bit line will help speed up the change between zero and one states. Reading the SRAM is achieved by accessing the bit line and reading its value. SRAM used to be on separate chips attached to the motherboard, but now it is inside the CPU. DRAM, Dynamic Random Access Memory, is called dynamic because it loses its contents over time. We can see why by looking at how it's constructed. This diagram shows one bit stored in DRAM, and like SRAM, each bit is at the intersection of a word line and a bit line. When a 1 comes into the bit line, the open transistor lets it come into the capacitor, which will hold the 1 value. Over time, however, the capacitor leaks a little, and so it has to be refreshed to hold the 1 value. Refreshing is done by reading the DRAM a line at a time and writing it back out. To change a 1 to 0, the transistor is opened again to let the stored value drain out and become a 0. Because each bit only requires one transistor and one capacitor, it's cheaper than SRAM and denser. To read DRAM, the transistor is opened and the resultant value is read on the bit line. This is a destructive read. The very act of reading the bit changes its value so it has to be rewritten again. DRAM is organized on memory boards that plug into the motherboard. DRAM is organized into banks for more efficient access. The refreshing is done by reading, writing a row at a time, and this can be done in the background and doesn't interfere too much with the access time of the DRAM. More modern DRAM chips have burst mode, which can supply successive words from a row with reduced latency. DDR double data rate DRAM can transfer on both the rising and falling clock edges, and QDR quad data rate DRAM can increase again by a factor of two by having two separate DDR input and output connections. Increasing the number of words read per read increases the bandwidth and makes memory access faster. Also, interleaving many banks can make for faster access, so that data from different banks can be read or written at the same time. Here we see the DIMM dual inline memory module chip that would plug into the motherboard. This table and chart shows the progress made in DRAM manufacturing from 1980 to 2007. Notice that the capacity goes up and the cost goes down. Access times have fallen exponentially during this time frame as well. Next we look at flash memory, one form of non-volatile memory. Flash is also called EEPROM, electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. It's faster and requires less power than magnetic disk. It's also more expensive. For many years, computer manufacturers didn't put flash drives in computers and laptops because of the problem they had of wearing out after thousands of accesses. Recall the erasable programmable part in the name. Writing involves erasing a cell of memory, and after thousands of writes to a memory cell, it could wear out. However, in modern drives, a disk controller can implement wear leveling to make sure that data is distributed across the disk rather than hitting the same cells over and over. Solid state drives in personal computers make them lighter, faster to boot up, and quieter. Here we see a magnetic disk, another form of non-volatile memory. These are relatively inexpensive for their high capacity but they're slower than solid-state drives. 
The drive has a lot of moving parts. The platters rotate while a read head moves to read or write data. Data is stored in units of words called sectors, and they're not stored sequentially. A file will have a starting sector. At the end of the sector is a pointer to the next sector, which could be on another track or even another cylinder. Because access is mechanical with rotational latency to deal with, access is relatively slow. In this video, we've looked at the four most commonly used memory technologies, how they're constructed, and where they fit into the memory hierarchy. We've also talked about the two important principles of temporal and spatial locality that make the memory hierarchy work. Data is moved from one level of the memory hierarchy to another by the CPU and operating system working cooperatively. In the next video, we'll focus on cache memory. Mm -hmm.